Hello, everybody, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Creative Insider, a podcast that will help you succeed in every creative field. In the today episode, we'll be talking about how to monetize your creativity. The whole world stops just like that. Hello and welcome to the new episode of the Creative Insider and thank you for joining. As you have heard in the intro, the topic of today's monetization. To be honest with you, the episode is very special for me. Um, I'm very sensible about this subject and I have started a podcast to have the opportunity to talk about topics like this one. And of course, uh, as you know, the goal of the show is to help you succeed in your creative field. One of the aspects of succeeding as a creative is to make money out of your creativity. So yeah, we want to be lucrative here. The reason I'm so sensible about the topic is because the lack of a future as a professional ar architect is what make me leave Italy. I did not see a future for me there in which I could make a living out of architecture. Uh, so I have decided to take part in the Erasmus Plus uh, exchange program. Uh, this was a great way for me to find out what are the opportunities in another country as Germany. Uh, for the non-European audience, Erasmus uh, is a European exchange program at university level. Uh, university students from the participant uh, countries have the opportunity to study one year abroad. Uh, during this year, you follow analog courses of your own university in, in another European country. Um, additionally, to give more students the, the opportunity to take part in the program, all participants uh, receive a scholarship as a support to cover part of the cost of living abroad. So more, my idea was to go to Germany. I knew it was a country in a way better economical situation as Italy. And my idea was just to establish some connections there uh, and go back eventually when I have completed my studies back home. Uh, well, the story ended up in a different uh, way and uh, developed in a different direction. Uh, so when I started uh, to getting to know the local students, all of them were working. And I don't mean the classical student jobs as a waiter or as a shop assistant, but um, I mean an actual job in the architectural industry. Uh, when I saw that, I felt a sense of inferiority. I remember that back then I still had my old uh, Italian mentality. I knew that as a young creative, to get a job, uh, it's almost impossible. Uh, first of all, you need connections uh, in that certain field. And even if you do have connections, you have to work for free for a certain time. And only after you have gained some experience, you could consider about asking for a very little wage. Um, by seeing these students already working in the industry um, and even getting paid for it, I told they must be geniuses. Uh, well, it ended up that they were not. They were just normal people as I was. They had only one advantage. Um, they could speak German and I couldn't. Uh, so I have started busting my ass to learn as much as possible And after five months, um, after I have learned some basics uh, level of German, uh, I landed my first job as an intern. Um, I was getting paid for doing something I loved. I remember that uh, the minimum hourly wage at that time in Germany was around eight euros and I was getting 11. For the first time in my life, I was not depending on my parents. Uh, that for me was really amazing. Um, I was in this team for architectural competitions at that firm and uh, my task was to Photoshop all the uh, presentation layouts. Uh, so if you have asked me back then, I would have done that job even for free. It was just fun. Um, well, that was and still is a completely wrong mindset um, and I want to explain you why. We creatives are often very naive people. We are aiming to earn money out of things that other people do as a hobby. That mislead us that what we do has no real value. Well, this is not the reality. 
With this story uh, and this episode of the podcast, I don't want to say that money are the measure of success or that your only goal should be money. No, of course I don't think that. What I actually think is that if money is what drives you, your uh, success will be a, a short-term one. You need to keep your focus on the passion for your craft, focus on the quality of your products, and of course uh, the result of this, the side effect of this will be money. But what I want you to to what I want to achieve in this episode is just to make you see money in a different perspective, uh, especially the people that uh, live in countries where creatives uh, tend to be exploited. Uh, so as I said, creatives are usually people which are deeply in love with what they do, uh, so much in love that sometimes uh, we don't see the big picture. First of all, you need to analyze the facts uh, to check uh, the reality. To get in the professional world as a creative, it's a hard work. It's the end of a long path. So I will not consider the mandatory years of school, which everybody need to attend. Um, but let's see what it means to get in the position to be a professional creative. For example, I have studied five years in a high school of art. And then to become an architect, I needed to study five years at the University of Architecture, uh, which took me actually six uh, because I have started working while studying, as I said. Uh, so what was the cost for my education uh, in those years? Let's, let's do some simple math here. Some people assume that the cost of your studies are your tuition fees, uh, which in most European countries are almost free. Uh, and then the books and the supplies you need to study, stuff like pens, notebooks, laptops, computers, whatever you need. Um, well, this idea is very simplistic. I want to give you another perspective, another way of calculating the cost of, for your education. Um, so in my formula, next to those expenses, you need to add also the money you need to survive as a human being in those uh, years. Uh, why do you need to consider those, those expenses cost for your education? Because during that time, you need to get support from someone else instead of working yourself. Uh, support from your parents or whoever took care of you. Um, for example, let's assume that my average expenses during my studies were 500 euros a month, which is actually very low. Uh, that makes yearly about 66,000 euros. I have become independent at the age of 23. So from 16 years old to 23, it makes seven years. Seven years per 60,000 euros uh, makes 42,000 euros. Uh, I took in consideration the age of 16 because in most uh, Western countries you can start working uh, at that age. So uh, let's consider that you uh, could have worked in the meanwhile uh, instead of studying and save your parents money. So here it comes um, the second factor of the cost of your studies, uh, which I call uh, potential missed earnings. So consider the minimum wage in your country, uh, a wage for a job that anyone could do. Um, now multiply that sum by the years you have studied instead of working full time. For example, in Italy, the minimum wage is around 700 euros, uh, which yearly makes 8,400 euros. And uh, 8,400 euros for seven years makes around 60,000 euros, roughly. So plus the 42,000 we said before, the total cost of um, my educations, uh, my education is around 100,000 euros. So in Europe, the cost of university education fluctuates around 100,000 euros. Often it's even more. Um, and even if you weren't aware about this, now you are. And now that you are... Not now that you know how much is the cost of your education. I guess now is the time to reevaluate how much you're ready to earn. Because after such an investment of money and time, I don't want to get paid crap. And you shouldn't either. I know what are you thinking. Now you will be thinking that the job market is what it is. You cannot force people to pay you more. 
and you still have no working experience and nobody will be willing to hire you or uh, even give you a high paying job in a very competitive industry. Uh, an industry where if you don't accept the conditions, there are 10 more people ready to take your spot. Well, you need to change mindset. Take reality for what it is and not for what you want it to be. You cannot change the system, but you can change yourself. Uh, let's see three strategies to adopt. First thing, start thinking that you are all on your own. No parents, no family members, or no friends. No any back, no other backup plan. If you fail, you end up on the streets. Second, ask yourself what is a high-paying job? How much should you be earning? Uh, well, you can calculate that in a similar way as uh, we did for the cost of uh, education. Uh, but do not do not consider making a calculation like you are willing to become a billionaire and right away buy a mansion and a Benz. No, that's not the way. Have some real expectations. What is the rent of a room in a shared flat? How much costs uh, your food in a discount shop per month? Uh, how much are your bills? How much you need for clothes? Um, in Europe, that is probably something a little above 1,000 euros for a very humble lifestyle, I need to say. Very Spartan lifestyle. And um, third, start considering yourself a business, a one-man company. But what is a business and how does it work? I'll give you the definition uh, from the book The Personal MBA of, George, uh, of Josh Kaufman. A uh, great book. I suggest you to read it. It's very interesting. So um, he defines businesses in the following way. A business provides something of value that other people want or uh, need um, at the price they're willing to pay in a way that satisfies the customer needs and expectation and in a way that the business has enough profits for the owners to continue operations. Uh, so let's go through these points together and see how does that work for you. So the value you provide as a creative is your work or the result of your work. Um, the people that are your customers that want or need what you're producing are your employers if you are employed or your clients if you are a freelance. And the last two points are codependent. On one side, you need to match the price that your employers or clients are willing to pay. But on the other side, that price cannot go below what you set up, set up as your minimum income you need. Um, so these are the points you need to put yourself in check. Uh, figure out what is the value you're producing and what is the price uh, it, it costs. There is... Only one situation in which I consider is okay not to get paid for your work. Um, let's say you are already providing uh, for yourself somehow, you're working something, uh, and you want to learn a new craft and uh, make it your profession or side hustle. Um, but so far you have zero knowledge in that field and you have invested zero money and time to, to learn anything. Uh, then you can try to flank a professional in that field and make for him all the chores and the simplest tasks uh, and ask back to learn from him. No money, but uh, knowledge. In this situation, you're uh, getting paid in knowledge and that knowledge will bring you back money later. So this is a good way to, to consider it, an investment in yourself. Um, but in the case of most of young graduates, you should not accept to earn let, less than what you need for your expenses. Um, so what you do with offers lower than your expectations? Well, it's simple. You reject them. You would think, but that means that I won't get any job in that field. Well, yeah, it's possible. It's possible that that specific field of creativity is not profitable. Uh, that means you need to change career path or maybe even change country, as I did. Um, but if you do, do accept to get paid less than what you need, uh, then you will bankrupt sooner or later. And we don't want that. To survive, you'll need to go back at your parents' place uh, and your life will be miserable. So uh, if your creativity does not allow you to provide for yourself then it's just a hobby. You, you better go and do something else. Uh, remember, 
you're not only spending your money and your energy, you're spending the most valuable thing that we all have, which is time. So why wasting your time for the profits of someone else? I don't think it's a good idea. But let's consider you made it. Let's consider you have a landed job in a creative industry on a professional level. How long do you stay on the entry level? Well, consider your job like those computer role play games. When you start, you're at level one. You are not good at all. You're a beginner. To improve, you need to complete missions. Uh, during those missions, you start to understand the game. You get better. And with time, you level up. Your career works the same exact way. Just complete all the tasks you're given at your best. Ask questions and learn from the more experienced people in your firm. Keep track of what is the outcome of your work. For example, uh, did anyone else need to correct your work? What was the, uh, was the client happy of the result? How long did it took you to complete the task? Um, and every time the results are positive, those are bonus points. Um, this is the value you're bringing to the firm. And the better you get, the value you're bringing to the firm is higher. Uh, and when you feel that you have reached a level where you're giving more than what you're receiving, then it's time to go and cash out. And if your consideration has been correct, trust me, you'll get what you wanted. Companies are generally happy to keep people uh, which are valuable, people which already know the organization and the way of working in the company. So, for example, when I have started my first job, as I said, I had no expectation. At the time, I had no professional experience. Uh, my German was bad. Uh, I was uh, ready to get paid whatever they have offered me because I was getting more value from the work than the value I was giving back. But um, I kept tra track of what I have uh, done for the company um, and how I have done it. After a year at the company, my German was good. All the projects I had worked on were successful. We had won some uh, competitions. Uh, I was bringing earnings to the company. Uh, so I have requested a meeting with the leadership on which I exposed those facts. And guess what was the reaction? I got a promotion. If you are a freelance, you can do the same with your clients. You can explain that until that point, your firm was young, new in the business, but the value of your work is now higher. That means that you need to rediscuss the prices for your services. Uh, what do you do when you do not get a promotion? Uh, well, sometimes our self-evaluation is wrong. Uh, so what you need to do is just go back at work, work more, work harder, work better, um, still keep track of the results of your work and then when you feel it, try again. And if you don't get any promotion at that point, maybe that is the time you to consider a new firm for your further development or new clients. Um, in the case of clients, mean that you probably need to drop that client and find a new one. The main rule is to consider always what you can give first and then think about what you can get back. Uh, but never be naive. There is a limit to everything. So be nice, never close doors, but move forward whenever is needed. Um, even if you are an employee, never distantiate yourself from the company. Uh, the company is not just the leadership, but is you and them together. If the company is not thriving, uh, you might lose your job. So take care of your tasks as the company was yours. Take care always of the company you're you're working at. It's like your golden mine. It's like you're digging money from there. So take care of it. So yeah, these were my thoughts uh, on the topic monetization for today. Uh, I hope you find it helpful. That is my mission, to help you. So to avoid that you end up being underpaid or exploited. Some of the things I say might be hard to process, but it's what is my personal experience. And I want to encourage you to see the different sides of the topic. Don't get influenced from the status quo. I don't consider myself someone perfect, which knows already everything. Uh, I'm always curious to learn back from you, so discover new points of views. Uh, I would be very curious to know your opinion on the topic, so feel free to get in touch on the usual social media channels, which are Instagram, which is at TCI Podcast, the LinkedIn page, The Creative Insider, and the Facebook page, The Creative Insider. 
Uh, making this podcast is really fun for me. It makes me uh, clear my mind, uh, put my thoughts in order, and I hope I'm helping you too. Uh, the work that is requested, it's actually a lot. It's way more than I expected. So uh, I will appreciate it a lot if you can support me uh, in a totally free way for you. So the way would be just subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening it. And it would be cool if you could share about it with family, friends, on your social media. Just spread the message to make the audience grow. Uh, you can contact me anytime, ask me questions or uh, suggest me topics for the next episode. It will be interesting to know what you want to hear about. And um, this thing, this, and this week, uh, I won't reveal what is coming next week, but it will be good. I hope you will join me again. And I wish you a good week for now. And bye. like that.